Welcome to this trigonometry video on sketches. This video is the first of two parts. In this overall video series on trigonometry, we will tackle these six aspects of trig. We have made it such that each section has a part one, which excludes grade 12 trig, and then a part two, which includes it. In each case, our hope is that you're able to see that the grade 12 trig is simply an extra layer to integrate into already established concepts. So this video, as we mentioned earlier, is part one of sketches. In looking at the concept of sketches, we are going to get practical straight away, seeing what to look out for and what steps to take, followed by looking through a worked example. Okay, so first let's look at what options to look for when tackling a sketches question. The tools we have available for reduction are quad angles and co-ratios, and so these are the angles we must be on the lookout for, always with reference to the acute angle given in the question. So with this as a guide of what to be on the lookout for, let's look now at the steps to follow which will work in most traditional sketch questions. Firstly, make a sketch. You will notice that the question doesn't instruct you to make a sketch, so part of the trick is identifying that it is in fact a sketch question. Often the word if means that you must make a sketch. The sketch you need to make is placing the acute angle given in the question in standard position. You are then required to add the missing information, usually by using Pythagoras for the third side, and then completing the triangle's information by finding the third angle. It can feel initially that the given information is incomplete, but as soon as you realize it is a sketch question and draw and complete the sketch, you see immediately that you do in fact have all the necessary information. The next step is to then look at the part questions and see where you can reduce angles to acute angles. Once you've done this using quad angles, you can then decide if you need to still apply co-ratios to get your situation to be in terms of the acute angle in the original question. Your final step is to manipulate or expand the expression depending on what the question is asking. Be sure to read your question to double check you're giving the answer in the way they have asked for. Okay, so that was probably quite a lot to take in. Let's apply it straight away to put our thinking into practice. This example, which is taken out of our grade 12 maths 2 in 1 study guide, has a couple of parts to it. Let's start with looking at what is given, remembering where our main focus needs to be. I've included the three steps here as a reminder. Pause the video now and give these a try before we go through the thinking step by step, starting with the sketch. Hopefully the sketch that you have made looks similar to this. Let's track back and go through the thinking, focusing first on the main part of the question, the acute angle around which we've been given the information, which in this case is 27 degrees. So the first thing you do in your sketch is to place 27 degrees in standard position and then draw in the line down towards the x-axis to create the triangle. Now check the question again to see what info you were given about 27 degrees and it says tan of 27 degrees equals P. And remembering that trig is all about ratios, the first step here is to write P as a fraction, so P over one. And because the ratio of tan is opposite over adjacent, we place P opposite 27 degrees and one adjacent to 27 degrees in our triangle. Finally, completing the triangle, first we find the third side using Pythagoras, and that is the hypotenuse, which will be the square root of p squared plus 1 squared. And then the third angle, which in this case is 63 degrees. Now that the sketch is sorted, let's have a look at the part questions a couple at a time. We'll start by taking a look at the first three part questions. You can find sine of 27 by simply reading off the sketch as the question is already in terms of our original acute angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse or y over r, so here it would then be p over root p squared plus 1. Then similarly for cos 27, again by reading off the sketch with reference to 27 degrees, adjacent over hypotenuse 
or x over r, which is 1 over root b squared plus 1. You may have noticed, because 27 degrees has been placed in standard position, we can use either of our definitions, O, A and H, or X, Y and R, to navigate our ratios. For 17.3, sine of 63 degrees shifts us to the third angle of the triangle. You can either read this directly off the sketch, sine being opposite over hypotenuse. Here, though, we are restricted to using the O, A and H definition as 63 is not in standard position. Alternatively, we can convert it to its co-ratio, which is cos 27 degrees. And to double check, this gives us the same answer from the sketch, cos of 27 is adjacent over hypotenuse. It can feel really great when the theory comes together and starts making sense in application. Let's have a look next at 17.4, tan of 153 degrees. First, we need to reduce to the ratio of an acute angle using quad angles. In this case, 153 degrees is a second quad angle, and so tan is negative in the second quad, and the acute angle being made with the x-axis is 27 degrees. The information given says that tan of 27 degrees equals p, and so this is just negative p. It will also work to read it off the sketch, of course. For 17.5, we must express tan of negative 27 degrees in terms of p, and again we find the quad the angle lies in and the acute angle formed with the x-axis. Negative 27 degrees lies in the fourth quad, and so again tan is negative here, and so the answer here is negative p. 17.6 is a bit more complicated, but still we follow the same process. Simplify it first by reducing it to a ratio of an acute angle. So 387 is an angle greater than a revolution and takes you into the first quad, making an acute angle of 27 with the x-axis. And cos is positive in the first quad, and so inside the bracket this reduces to cos 27. Then the whole thing is squared because of this too. We already found cos of 27 earlier in the question, and so its squared is 1 over p squared plus 1. It would be great if you followed through as soon as possible with tackling other such examples to really get the hang of these sketch questions. Remember, a big part of getting confident with these questions is first being able to identify them as sketch questions. And once you've done that and made the sketch, you can then get used to all the different ways it can be asked by working through a variety of examples. When you're ready for the next video, part two will look at how to expand your approach to sketch questions when compound and double angles are also included. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.